Okay, so we will model a really simple low polygon boombox looking object um, in Blender so that we can use the tools we just learned in edit mode, all right? So uh, we need a, uh, a, uh, an add-on that's built in in Blender enabled in order to make this exercise a little bit easier, all right? So this is your if this is your first time um, uh, messing around with add-ons um, or if you're a seasoned uh, veteran we need this add-on enabled because it makes it uh, faster for us to make a selection into a particular shape in this particular case we want a circle shape so let's go there first let's go to edit preferences and add-ons okay what we want is the loop tool enabled. I already have it enabled on mine. So just simply go to search right here and then type in L-O-O-P for loop tools. Yours will be unchecked. So simply put a check mark on that to enable it. Okay. So when you do, when you right click in edit mode, and you can just close that by the way, uh, there's no saving or anything. Once you've done your whatever it is you need to do, just simply close it. Okay, when you right click, you now have the option at the top for loop tools right there. Okay, all right, so let's get started. So we're gonna do a really simple one. So the cube here, we're gonna extrude two uh, sides right here of the cube, which is actually, this is the front, okay? That's the front, okay? We want to select the left and right side. So hit tab to go to uh, edit mode. Select the right side right here and make sure you're in your select tool, okay? And in face mode, number three, please. So you got that selected, okay? And then pivot the camera a bit, orbit it, and then shift click this one. So you have the right and left side both selected, okay? If you want to make sure you got those selection correctly, go to x-ray mode. Then you can see the outline at least on that side or go to... Uh, wireframe mode this will easily confirm your selection okay so I'm gonna go to my uh, solid mode turn that off because you can still see that those things are selected okay so now I'm gonna go and press number one on the numpad to be in the front okay and you still have the selection okay so now I'm going to extrude those so I'm gonna press E to extrude okay and it's you can see it kind of going up and down Okay, right click to cancel. So we only want to extrude it, but right click cancel the movement. What we want is to scale this going that way. Okay, so one way to do it is, of course, do your keyboard shortcut S and then X axis, which is the red, and then move your mouse cursor until we're just kind of eyeballing a square. No need to be perfectionist right here. Okay, you can do that like that. Or you can click on the scale tool right here and then grab the X red direction axis then you can drag that instead so multiple ways of doing the exact same thing all right so let's say that's good enough right there so all we did was extrude those two equal right so don't do one and move it don't do the other one because you'll never make sure that uh, you know it's hard to tell if they're the same extrusion all right so next let's create our speakers right here Super simple, okay? But first, if we just want to extrude this, we'll never get a circle because it's a square, it's a rectangular selection, okay? So we want to do some cuts, so loop cuts. So I'm going to go to my select tool right here. I'm going to do Control R, okay? Loop cut and slide. So I'm going to go right here on this line, and it tell it's telling me, hey, you want this vertical cut right here? Yes, left click to confirm, then it asks you where you want to position it. We don't want to move it anywhere but the center, so right click to cancel. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing here. Control R, left click to confirm, right click to cancel the movement. All right, so we got those two cuts right there. Um, if you're asking, could we just extrude that and then move it and then extrude again? Yeah, but it's you can't guarantee that these are exact same size not unless you're looking at your measurement, right? So we need another cut going here. So I'm going to go Control-R on a 
vertical line so I get a horizontal cut and I want it dead smack center between those top and two uh, bottom lines. So I'm going to left click to confirm, right click to cancel. All right, so basically we added like this four faces here and then another four faces right there. All right, to act like as if they are speakers. Okay, so next I want to create a border on this one and on both sides. Okay, so I'm going to press I or inset faces right there so I'm gonna press I on the keyboard and then drag my mouse and then I get kind of like a border so just kind of eyeball it about that much right there okay excellent all right so now we're gonna select just this four okay I'm gonna right click and then loop tool circle all right so we could have done that actually um, and it's not that hard it's just that that is so much faster because if I want to do this manually using points I would have to go so on and so forth but not as perfect as that one so I'm gonna undo those select the faces go number three right click it loop tool at the top and circle all right now what we want is to select all eight faces at the same time we're gonna extrude this now going outward so I'm gonna press E to extrude there we go okay and then I'm gonna press I for inset faces so we get that frame border and this time I'm going to do a extrude but instead of going out I'm gonna go in so it looks like we have kind of like an opening for the speaker right there all right excellent it's almost done okay and for this one let's say it's our cassette tape opening because we want do want to make it kind of low poly so we're gonna select this face and that one we're gonna do the same thing I'm gonna press I Maybe around there but I want to make it wide so I'm gonna to go to my scale tool go to the x-axis which is this direction the red one and kind of make it like so all right and then I'm gonna press I okay and then I'm gonna press E to extrude going in all right just so that we sort of have like a kind of like some detailing in there okay all right now let's create the handle so I'm gonna select both of those uh, total four faces okay I'm gonna press I inset faces and drag this all right and then what I want to do is press E to extrude up okay now I'm gonna press E again but I don't want to move the mouse I want to press S to scale so E and then S I want to scale it in but look what's happening it's scaling in the center right because our coordinate system right now and our pivot point uh, is by default is the median point so whatever I want to do with this, scale them, they keep want to scale in the center of their selection. So we will temporarily change our pivot point into individual origin, meaning scale within your selection. If I press S right now, it scales right there. So what would be the other option? Select both and then press I, correct? okay so that's the same thing so we just learned something right here it's kind of like a long way but I do want to show you that you can change your pivot point and it behaves differently so let me put this back to median point where it was okay so we made those smaller I'm gonna press I I'm sorry E to extrude right there I'm gonna press E okay to extrude now I want this to go out so the I won't go what work here I only goes in so I need to put this back to individual origin press S to scale 
All right, so, and I'm just kind of eyeballing the thickness of that one with that one. All right, and then now press E. All right, or maybe move it up a bit. We want it at least looking like a, uh, a square. Okay, right there. Now uh, I'm gonna switch this back to median point. I'm gonna select that face and that one at the same time, shift click. I'm gonna press I. All right. And then I'm going to control R here. So it goes all the way the object. Left click to confirm, right click to cancel the movement. All right. Now I'm going to select this faces here. All right. And right click it. Loop cut, loop tool circle. Sorry. There you go. Do the same thing here. And if you want it, uh, well, let me click on doing that. Sorry. Let's add another cut right here. So we kind of get a more circular shape. Control R right there. So we get vertical and horizontal cut. Control R here as well. Left click to confirm. Right click to cancel movement. Now I'm going to select those. Loop cut circle. There you go. It's slightly better, right? Do the same thing here. Right click, loop cut circle. And I'm going to select both. All right. And what I'm going to do is right click one selection. Then we're going to go bridge faces and just connect that thing. All right. And we are done with our super low polygon weird looking boombox. Okay, so what's going to happen to this is that uh, we will have other lessons to kind of give it shading um, and texture, and then uh, we need to learn how to create mark, I mean, uh, sharp edges and whatnot. So for now, to complete this homework, you need to color it. Okay, so I'm going to hit tab here, go to object mode, and then we're going to switch to a workspace called shading right here. Shading simply means... Uh, Telling the surface of the object to what type of uh, object it will be. Does it look like plastic, metal, so on and so forth. Okay. So for this one, we're going to uh, add, uh, you're going to learn multiple ways to, uh, I mean, multiple uh, shader in a single object. So right now it doesn't have any shader. It's just whatever default that came uh, with the cube. Okay. So while this one is selected and we're in the shading uh, tab and uh, workspace, Navigate in the property until you see this sphere or the circle near the bottom. This is your sh uh, shader tab. There's nothing applied, so click new. Okay, this is basically crash course. We'll have another lesson specific to dealing with this, uh, with all these things, uh, you know, uh, in more detail, of course. Okay, let's change this one to, uh, let's say, the base color a little bit grayish. And then we're going to make it metallic. The metallic right here dragged this all the way one. All right. So now it's a, uh, well, it's not metal. All right. So let's, uh, let's make it shiny. Uh, lower the, uh, well, not too shiny. Lower the roughness a little bit. Okay. So we kind of made it all metal. Now let's select parts that are a uh, different color. Okay. So what we need to do is while you're here, let me turn on my screencast. Okay, press tab like we're in object mode. So you can actually edit here also. Okay, so while this thing is still selected right here, we want this to be, let's say we're just going to do a two-tone. We just want this white plastic shiny. Okay, so we're going to add a new material. So let's rename this first. Let's call this gray metal. We're going to add a new material. I'm going to click plus right here. Okay. I'm going to click new. I'm going to call this one white plastic. All right. So let's make it white plastic first. So first thing is that we'll make it really white. There you go. On the base color. Let's not mess with the metallic. It should be zero. And it's in plastic. Let's make it shiny plastic. So less roughness. Okay. So now while this thing is selected, 
if you happen to have unselected this, please click on number three faces and then shift click. Okay, until you get all the way around or kind of like this. Or you can alt click this line right here. It will do a loop selection of those faces all the way around. Select the white plastic and then click assign. And as you can see, if we go to object mode here by hitting tab, that bar is kind of white. Okay, let's add some more that's supposed to be white. So what about the, what about this circle uh, on the speaker? Okay, so I'm going to select this. If I select that line right there, alt click, selects it all the way. I want to include this as well. So I'm going to add shift. So I have alt shift click right now. I'm going to click that line between the uh, polygons or faces. Okay. And that one as well. All right. And if you find it difficult to hold your selection, so whatever it is you were able to uh, select, just go to white and then hit assign at that point. Okay, then you can always add to it. All right, but I will include this one here. So Alt Shift click and add to the white plastic selection. There we go. We're gonna do the same thing here. And Shift click that one so it has a like a gray inside white plastic assign all right and let whatever accent piece can we do here maybe this right here and that one shift click sorry there we go white plastic assign all right and then of course that white plastic can go green or whatever you wish you want uh, it's going to keep it white for now. Okay. And that's our super low polygon boombox, which is all quad. And this is your first homework.